Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us in uh, our Thursday Bible study. Uh, it's been an eventful day. And my wife didn't have me in working in the yard all day, so uh, I'm just uh, coming back in and showering and from cutting grass. But I'm excited about Bible study today. Uh, we're going to continue on that part two of 12 Ways to Increase Your Joy. So we're going to continue that Bible study. We'll do a little review, and then we'll go into uh, pick up where we left off last week. I pray that uh, your joy since last week uh, uh, to this week have been increased. Uh, I know we face a lot of things in life, a lot of difficult situations and circumstances, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah, we must reside in that joy and abide in that joy. And know that he's working everything out to our good. Uh, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And those who are the called according to his purpose. So we have the promises of God on our side. Regardless of what we go through in life. Uh, we can have joy. Don't mean we joy over what we're going through. But we can joy in what we're going through. So let's pray and then we're going to get started. Uh, with the Bible study for today, we'll do a little review, then we'll pick up where we left off last week. Twelve ways to increase your joy. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for just waking us up another day. And God, we able to call on your name. We, we able to know that we're saved through your son, Jesus, God. And we we're able to do the things that we do in life, God. It's the simple things that we are, you allow us to do. Not only do you wake us up, but you let us do physical uh, activities, God. And we thank you for that. We're able to do physical activities. We thank you for things that we often overlook, God. We even thank you for tiredness. God, it let us know that we're still human and we're still alive. And God, there's so many things that we overlook, uh, we complain about God, but we simply give you glory and honor today, God. We just praise your holy name. Now, God, just give us wisdom, insight, and knowledge as we uh, present this Bible study, God, that we rightly divide the word of God. God, we simply say, may the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God say, amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. You know, even in my prayer, I, how often do we take small things for granted that the things that God let us allow us to do or give us the ability to do and sometimes we just take it for granted you know yes I'm a little tired from cutting, cutting grass but I thank God for that I thank God that uh, that he can still let me have the ability at my age that I can do physical things and have a reasonable portion of life health and strength I used to say the old people, older people say it, but now I'm one of those older people. So, yes, I, I thank him for that. I thank him for so much stuff that we take for granted. You know, we can find joy in just knowing that God still has us. He's still allowing us. He's still holding us up, and he's still keeping us. Well, our base scripture is found in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, very familiar passage of scripture. We're reading out the New Open Bible, Philippians chapter 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want to read a little bit further. In verse 8, it said, Finally, brethren, what, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And it says, meditate on these things and the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So we just have to look for those things that 
we often look for the dark side of life, but there is a bright side if we look hard enough. So we're talking about 12 ways to increase your joy. So uh, Philippians 4 and 4, but I read Philippians 4 through 9. Philippians chapter 4, 4 through 9. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, 4 through 9. 12 ways to increase your joy. I'm sorry about the phone. Uh, but uh, we continue to uh, move forward in, in this. Uh, hold on just a minute. I'm having some technical difficulties. So having some technical difficulties. All right. Well, let's just continue to move forward. Uh, so 12 ways to increase your joy. So let's just do a review from last week. Uh, we're just having some technical difficulties with our podcast part, but we'll get it straight now. So, number one, joy celebrates. We talked about that last week, that joy celebrates. That means that uh, we celebrate. We should celebrate uh, what God is doing in our lives and what God is doing in the lives of other people. Uh, so often we, we, uh, we think about the bad side, that we never take time and really celebrate the goodness of the Lord. You know, we use that cliche, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. We, we need to celebrate more. Celebrate each day, each moment that God has given us. Hey there, Pastor Ace and Brother Tim, Pastor Farr. We thank God for you. So joy celebrates. Not only do joy celebrate, joy abides. That means that we we obey the commands of God and we remain in the love of God. And and and, we, and when we obey the commands of God and remain in the love of God, he remains in us and that fuels our joy. That strengthens our joy. Uh, and, and, and God tells us that in John 15, 10 through 11. He said, I told you this so that your joy may be, that may be in you and that your joy may be made complete. So we can find joy in abiding in, in, in the Lord. We can find joy abiding in the commandments of God and, and, and in the love of God. I think sometimes we have too many pity parties and we don't abide in that love and, 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 and the, that God gives us. I told you, I started this thing off and said, we take so much for granted that God grant us every day. The use of our limbs are able to get up in the morning and, and, and able to go about our daily chores. You know, that's things that we should begin to celebrate because I know a lot of people that that's in the world but don't know they're in the world. But so often we we who are still able to move and, and go about our business, we we don't we don't abide, we don't celebrate and remain in that love that God gives us every day and celebrate that love. Uh, not only that, number three, joy reads. And if you want your joy to increase, you, you read the Word of God. There's so much in the Word of God that gives us hope, that gives us peace, that gives us strength, that gives us comfort. So joy reads. We constantly cultivating, cultivating our life. Uh, the spiritual life is not so mystic as we want it to be. God made it so simple if we just read, pick up the Word of God and read, begin to read the Word of God. Not only read the Word of God, but abide in the Word of God. Apply the Word of God. And then our joy and our hope and our strength will be increased. Uh, in Psalms 19.8a, it said, The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. When we live in that commandments of God, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, and thy soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself, that increases our joy. So we got to read the word of God, apply the word of God, and, and, and watch our joy be increased. Because there's so much strength in the word. There's so much encouragement. There's so much hope. There's so many promises in the word. But we simply got to be learn to, to walk in those commandments, apply them to our life. Not only do joy reads, but joy sings. Joy sings. You know, uh, I'm not a singer, but, you know, it's good. There's time that God just places things on my heart. And I, I may not, I'll make up a song. 
I, when I'm thinking about the goodness of God, I, I just begin to make up a song. But joy sings. Not singing those pity party songs, but joy sings about the goodness of the Lord. Uh, see, and Paul encouraged the church at, uh, uh, at Ephesus in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. He said, be, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs and sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. You know, I don't have to wait till I get to church on Sunday morning. You know, when I'm driving in my car, when I'm in the kitchen, when I'm just at the computer, you know, joy sings. When you begin to feel down, begin to let a song uh, come up in your heart. You know, even the scripture tells us that he'll place a new song in your voice. He'll place a new song in your life. Not only do joy, to increase your joy, it, it celebrates, it abides, it reads, it sings. But it also gives. Joy gives. You know, have you ever just blessed somebody not expecting anything back? And not even letting people know that you blessed them. See, we live in a world now that when people bless somebody, first thing they want to do is take out their phone and their camera and, and record it so they can put it on Facebook so people can, you know, see what they're doing. But what you do in the secret, God will openly reward you, especially if you do it from the from a good place in your heart. But joy gives, joy, joy gives, and and, and joy just simply want to want somebody else, somebody else to be happy, somebody else to uh, to know that the blessings of God have come upon their life. You know, the more we give, we say that the more we give, the more He'll give back to you. But sometimes we're so tight-fisted that we can't receive the blessings of God because we don't want to bless anybody else. And if we bless somebody again, we want everybody to know it. You know, so we have to get away from and want to advertise our spirituality in that way of giving. If we're giving with the right heart, you know, we don't have to put it on Facebook. Everybody don't have to know, you know, bless somebody outside your circle. You know, so, so joy gives. Not only do joy gives, but joy meditates. Joy meditates. You know, Psalms 1, I love it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but is delighted in the law of the Lord. And in that law does he meditate day and night. See, joy meditates. When you, when you meditate on the goodness of God, you meditate on the word of God and you meditate on, on how far God has brought you and what he's doing in your life and how he keeps you and how he's sustaining you, that he didn't just save you, but he's also sustaining you. So joy meditates. Joy meditates. Okay, now we're going to get to that. That's just a review. Now we're going to get to where I left off uh, last week. Now, number seven is. Joy ask. Joy ask. A-S-K. Joy ask. See, Jesus made it clear to his disciples that they had overlooked an incredible well of joy as they walked with him simply by not asking him for more. John 16, John chapter 16, verse 24. It says, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you, re you, sh you will receive and your joy will be complete. Now, when we talk about asking, we're not talking about materialistic things. We need to ask God to uh, show us, show us the, the things that we need to see in this life, to, to show us the goodness in, in even the darkest moment of our life. Show us the lesson that we need, we, we need to learn as we go through life. See, uh, I think sometimes Christians, we, we can feel guilty asking God to give us more of him. Because we've been saying that we ought to have enough now. I, I want more of God. Every day I want more of God. I, 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 and that's what I want to ask God. Give me more of you. You know, um, it is, it, it's important to have to remember that God wants to bless us. He wants us in uh, he want to bless us in abundant ways, including, but not e including, 
But even beyond our physical needs, Christ made it clear that when we don't ask, we forfeit many blessings as a result. Uh, 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 we forfeit many blessings as well as joy. He says that we have not because we ask not. He, we have not because we ask not. There's times that I've asked God, uh, God uh, I've asked him for, for material things, but I've asked him for spiritual things. Even when I ask him for material things, I ask him to make sure that I'm in his will, that I'm going to use it for the benefit of kingdom building. Okay? Uh, if I'm not going to share what God has already given me, why am I asking him for more? But this, that, this is a, one of those, uh, points in, in this joy thing of asking. We got to ask with the heart of God, ask with the eye of God, ask with the love of God that we can, that we're going to use it to extend to further the kingdom of God. So, when we ask him, we're not so much asking out of personal needs, but we're asking out of spiritual and, 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 and needs to help somebody else. But there are times that I've, that we have to ask God to meet our personal needs. There, there's times that we ask God, we ought to ask God for healing. We ought to ask God for deliverance. We even ought to ask God for a monetary blessing. When we're really, especially when we're doing all the things that we're doing, we don't have to remind God that we're tithing. We can just simply go to God and make our requests known. Okay? So joy ask of God. God wants us to be dependent upon him. But in asking, the next one is so important. We Joy surrenders. Joy surrenders. So when I'm asking God, I surrender to how he wants me to use it, okay? But joy surrenders. Paul knew that it was like, uh, what it was like to swim up tide and to do so with joy. In other words, Paul knew what it, was, what it was like to go through tough time, to swim against the, 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 the flow of the current. You know, as a song we used to sing, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain, See, Paul knew what it was, but even in that, he, he did so with much joy. He came up on the, he had some rough times in his life, but he did so with joy. That when he wrote to the Philippian church, he was chained day and night. When Paul wrote to the Philippian church, he was chained day and night to a rotating, uh, guards, it was rotating guards. And while under house arrest, even this in this limiting state, however, he wrote this wonderful epistle of joy. He did. He said, in addition, he made it clear that even these desire, even in these dire circumstances, he still found reasons for joy. So Paul, regardless of what he was going through, he was arrested. He, he had guards on his house and he was a uh, round the clock guard. He still was able to write about joy. And he made it clear that even though the circumstance was looking rough, it did not dictate his joy. He still found reasons for joy. Paul knew that sometimes to discover joy, we must surrender ourselves to God, uh, what God allowed circumstances. So oh, that's, that's a hard one for people to get, that sometimes to find joy we have to surrender to God allowed circumstances. Woo! Listen, if we believe that God is sovereign, if we believe that God is sovereign, and that 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 no matter what comes our way, uh, the devil has no reign over life. Uh, he have to go through God. God allows it. Uh, ask Job. We we talk about Job all the time. But God allows certain, some things that are in our life is not because we're out of the will of God. It's because we are in the will of God. And he can trust us because we have surrendered to him. Woo! Have, have you considered my servant Larry? Some things we go through is not because we're out of the will of God. And we can find joy in it because we know it's a God-allowed circumstance. Philippians chapter 2. 
Philippians chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. It says, But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you, so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Paul said, even though it feel like I'm being poured out like a drink offering of sacrifice, look like, like I'm being sacrificed for my service to God. Uh, I'm being sacrificed for my faith in God. I'm being sacrificed for coming to other people and te teaching them about the goodness of God. He said, I'm glad and I rejoice with all of you so that you too should be glad and rejoice with me. In other words, Paul said, regardless of what I'm facing, if I'm doing the will of God, I've surrendered to the call of God. I've, resent, I've surrendered to the message of God. So even if the enemy comes against me, even if I'm going through hard, to, hard situations, I rejoice in the fact that knowing that I'm in the will of God. And I'm rejoicing in the fact that if people see my joy in the midst of what I'm going through, it can bring joy to their life. So we have to surrender. That That's an awesome uh, testimony right there. We want this walk with God to be a bed of roses. You know, uh, but we have to understand that the closer we get to God, the more we're going to be attacked by the enemy. Okay? So we have to learn to rejoice even as we serve God and we have circumstances come into our life. So joy asks, joy surrenders. Now this brings us to the, the, the ninth one. Joy serves. Joy serves. So when we surrender to God, we say, God, use me. Use me in your service. Use me in your service. Use me in to further the kingdom of God. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to be your mouth. So God, use me regardless of the cost. God, use me. I surrender it all to you, God. I surrender it all. So in surrendering, that means that my joy is made complete when I'm serving God, when I'm serving the kingdom of God, when I'm serving the people of God. Okay? Kingdom mindset is just not serving God. Sometimes we have to serve the people that of God. We have to serve People that don't even like us, but with kingdom mindset, we know it's greater, it, it, it's a greater purpose behind our service. See, we, we sing that song, I want to be an instrument of praise. So Jesus came into this world, not as a king, but as a servant. He came into this world, not as a king, but as a servant. He came to show us that the greatest joy it's found when we learn how to truly serve God and people in need. Wow. Jesus showed us that. He came to show us the greatest joy is found when we learn how to truly serve God and people in need. You know, you can't serve God and not be willing to serve people. You can't really serve God without uh, really, really want to serve people, okay? Because you might, I mean, when you think about the cross, yeah, you get it right horizontally, then you got to get it right vertically. Oh, did I say that backwards? When you get it right with God this way, you serve this way too, okay? Uh, -uh. But we, but Jesus came to show us that, that we, we have to have, we have to learn that the the heart of a genuine servant is a joyful one. The heart of a genuine servant is a joyful one. You know, we, we, we have to serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. You know, yes, he gives us some tough tasks. He gives us some things that, that we may not like doing, Acts Jonah. You know, he gives us some as pastors and preachers and prophets and bishops or what he gives us some things that we have to say, but we do it out of the by joy uh, for serving God and know that it's going to be beneficial for the people of God that hears it, that we're, we're serving. So we know that that's part of the furtherance of the kingdom of God. When I talk about the furtherance of the kingdom of God, I'm talking about more people being saved, 
more souls being saved and, and, and more people that have that eye on heaven. But the genuine servant is a joyful one. We don't count it, you know, we don't look at it like it's a burden. He, he said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. When we, when we discipline our minds, when we discipline our mind to focus on God's will and the needs of others, we discover a place where joy abounds. I need, listen, discipline our mind to focus on God's will and the need of others. We discover a place where joy abounds. Wow. The journey of serving God is supposed to be one paved with great joy. The, the, to much is given, much is required. I, I'm a firm believer that the more we give, the more we reset, the more we surrender to God, the more we serve God, the more God will use us in, 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 in his, in his service. Uh, see Psalms 100 verses 1 through 3. It said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that ye, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Okay. Lord, he made us. He created us. We ought to serve the Lord with gladness. And we come before his presence with singing. Remember I told you joy sings? When the last time you sung in the presence of God? When, you know, we always crying about what, what, what's wrong in our life. When you had, when the last time you just, just had a good shout about all the things that's right in your life? Serving God. Even though people may not like you, haters may come against you, but you, you considering your mind is focused on the will of God. And the need of people. And you define that place of joy. That you won't turn back now. We said. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. You know. It's, it's not just getting us through tough times. It's, 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 it, that applies even when we're serving God. You know. We, we use these things when we're going through tough times. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. Why we can't say that. When we're having a difficult, when we're serving God and people are, 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 are hating on us. Why can't we say, believe, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. That I'm, I'm focused on the will of God and serving God with gladness. Knowing that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So joy, joy serves. Joy serves. Not only does joy serve, but joy hopes. Joy hopes. Woo! Joy hopes. Listen, heaven, heaven is often on the mind of the most joyful Christians. Heaven is often on the mind of the most joyful Christian. Even the writers of most famous hymns usually change gears in the last verse of their composition from their from earthly to heavenly. For example, we move from many dangers, toys, and snares when we've been there 10,000 years living life with heaven in mind is one of the best ways to renew our joy. Just think about it. When you, when you know that God has brought you, brought you through many dangers, toys, and snares, and we've been there 10,000 years. Then we got to think about how God have brought us through so much in our life that we can, we know that the, that the hope of God is still there and it's a hope that will not disappoint. Why? Because we've seen him do so much in the past that we know that, that he's going to do things in the future. He who have begun a good work in you will see it unto completion until the day of Jesus Christ. See, we lose sight of the hope that God gives us. My hope is in God. My hope is in, in nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I, I don't trust anything other than that. Living life with heaven in mind 
is one of the best ways to renew your joy. Listen, when, when, when you're in one of your darkest moments and you know that you know that you know, that you know that you know that you know that you're on your way to heaven, you can find joy and peace and comfort in the midst of no matter what you face. Listen, because uh, you know I, I, I serve in the hospice uh, uh, I serve in the hospice, uh, not hospice business, but I serve in the hospice ministry. Uh, I'm the chaplain for a, a hospice ministry. And uh, there's nothing that does my heart even better. I walked into a patient's room the other day, and uh, this patient is on his, uh, he's on his dying bed. He, he's, he's close to transitioning. He's imminent. And then uh, I went in to talk with him, and he said, Chaplain, I'm a believer. I know where I'm going, and I know who I'm going to see. It, it, even in the midst of what he's going through, he found hope and joy in the midst of his dying experience. Because he said, I know I'm a believer. I know where I'm going, and I'm at peace with that. Man, how, you know, that just did my heart good to hear that testimony, because in the in his darkest hours, heaven was still in his view. Heaven was still in his view. If the vertical focus of heaven is our highest hope, then nothing in our horizontal experience or relationship can keep us from the promise of it. So when we Vertically, when we keep our eyes, now we don't want to become so heavenly minded that we know earthly good. That's not what I'm talking about. But now what I'm talking about is that when I'm going through harsh situations in this life, it doesn't steal my joy. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. This is a joy that surpasses all, a joy and a peace that surpasses all understanding. This is a joy that not predicated on my circumstances or my situation. This is a joy that know that I have a promised home in heaven and one day, regardless of what I'm going through, it's all going to be over. Okay? But that means that regardless of what I go through in this life, regardless of what, what people throw at me in this life, I got to keep that vertical uh, focus that it keeps us it, me focused on the promises of what I have in heaven. And then it helps me to treat people right because I never want to lose sight of heaven by mistreating people, by mishandling people. When I, when I got heaven in my view, I, I want to always and surrender to the will of God. I'll, I'll be careful to miss not to mishandle people and mishandle situations and mishandle circumstances. Why? Because uh, I still have the hope of the Lord in my life. And if I have hope, I want to always disseminate that hope to somebody else. So often that phrase that hurt people hurt people. And when hurt people are people that have lost their hope, they've lost their joy. And, and, and I don't want to be one of those people. Life has a way of throwing us uh, curveballs are, but, but my hope is in the Lord. My hope and my strength is in the Lord that one day I'm going to leave this world. One day I'm going to leave this world because the world going to let you down. But we, we can, but I have an inheritance that would never fade, spoil, or go away. I, I, I have been accepted in, 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 in the beloved. I, I'll be able to stand before a holy God and the scripture tell me I'll be able to stand there holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Why? Because I place my hope, my trust, my joy in the Lord. God will never let us down. I hope in him we will never be disappointed. Will we be hurt on this journey? Sure. But we will never, he will never let us down. He will see us through. Okay, joy hopes. Joy enjoys. Now that, that may sound like a cliche, but joy enjoys. 
See, because I, I, I'm a firm believer that I think sometime on this Christian journey, we don't take time to really enjoy the journey. We don't really take time to enjoy the journey, uh, enjoy the journey. We so, we so ca caught up in what's happening to us or how we're feeling that we don't take time to really enjoy the journey. When I think about where I was before I came to God, before I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, when I thought about what it took for me to feel good and, and participate in life, to where I am now, the, 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 the simple things mean more to me than all the things that I used to do when I was in the world. I take time, as the cliche say, I take time and smell the roses now. I take time and notice the small things. I, I, my joy is because I enjoy the journey. I enjoy the journey with God. I enjoy God. I enjoy his company. I enjoy his correction. I, I, I just enjoy God. And I, and I know it, it almost sounds too good to be true. Uh, but yet God not only wants us to worship him, but he also wants us to enjoy him. Woo! When, as we worship, that's the reason when our worship becomes more pure, our worship becomes more real because we enjoy the journey with God. It's not a tedious one, but it's one of enjoyment. Yes, yes, sometimes there's, there's some, 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 some situations and circumstances that we have to endure, but I enjoy the presence of God in my life. I, again, I gotta go back. I enjoy the correction of God in my life. I enjoy the keeping of uh, how he keeps me, how he sit on me sometimes for Tyson, Tracy, how he sits on me sometimes and hold me and won't let the world take that joy away from me. So we got to take time to enjoy God. Not making him a friend, not making him a BFF. It simply means that we enjoy spending time with God. We enjoy the things that God is doing in our life. Listen, Psalm 16, Psalm 16, Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11, it said, In thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand pledges forevermore. Man, in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. That's the reason, you know, you can wake up in the morning and say, Good morning, God. Good morning, Lord. Good, You know, this is the day the Lord has made. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm enjoying the presence of God. I'm enjoying his direction. I'm enjoying his guidance. I'm enjoying how he speaks to my heart. I'm enjoying, even like I said, I keep saying this over and over again, even the correction of God. When I want to get off track, how he nudges me and get me back in the right lane. How sometimes, and I'm not the only one, how sometimes my mind want to wander back. To what I used to do, how he gently reminds me that I'm not that person anymore, that this is where I am. Oh man, take time and enjoy God. Not not regulating him to be your best friend, but he is your best friend. He is a friend of mine. But do we really and take time and enjoy God? That's when our worship becomes so authentic. Because we enjoy the presence of God. We enjoy the things that God is doing in our life. Sherwood Worth. Sherwood Worth said it well. This is what Sherwood Worth says. And I'm quoting him. Joy is more than a sense of comic. More than earthly pleasures. And to believer is even more than what we can call happiness. Joy is is the enjoyment of God and the good things that come from the hands of God. Joy is the enjoyment of God and the good things that come from the hand of God. See, you got to learn how to enjoy the face of God. Seek the face of God and see, won't the hand of God be open to you? I, I'm a firm believer. I believe that the reason that we counter, we, we forfeit so many blessings uh, 
from God is because we cry too much about what we don't have and we never take time to enjoy all the things that God have already done for us. I'm a firm believer that, that we, we don't take time to enjoy the things that God have already blessed us with, the words that God has already placed in our life, the promises that God has already placed on our life. Uh, this, this scripture has been in my spirit, pressed down, shaken together, running over into the bosom, into my bosom. See, I want to enjoy everything that God has for me. How do I do that? I, 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 I go back to all the other things. I surrender. I sing. I meditate. I serve. Woo! I abide. I celebrate. All those things. That's, that's how we begin to enjoy the goodness of God. That's when I don't have to just fall into that cliche when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he does for me. No, my mind is always focused on the goodness of Jesus. I don't have to sit down and think about it. I can see it. I can feel it. I can acknowledge it on a regular basis. Man, that's powerful right there. When I think about it, I don't have to sit and meditate. He woke me up this morning. His goodness. He kept me closed in my right mind, his goodness. He gave me, able to let me have use of my hands and my feet and my legs, goodness. He gave me a voice to speak, eyes to see, ears to hear, gave me food. I don't have to sit down and think about it. I enjoy the goodness of the Lord on a regular basis. Look, I'm about to get happy in here all by myself because I don't have to think about it. It's just, it's, it's just so present in my life. But I get what the song is saying when I think about it. But it's constantly on my mind. I constantly acknowledge the enjoyment that God brings to my life. Oh, I'm getting happy. But just, just, just to me, when we say when I think about the good, that means I got to sit down and really give thought to it. I don't have to give thought to it. It's forever before is ever present in my life. It's forever present for my eyes to see. When I look out my door and see creation, when I look out and see the beauty of God everywhere, man, I, I enjoy the, how God has brought me from where I was to where I am now. To where I couldn't be trusted with anything. Now he trusts me with so much. Woo! I enjoy. Enjoy God. Enjoy God. Enjoy the presence of God. Alright. <clears throat> I'm going to give you my last one. And I'm going to wind it up. The last one I'm going to give you. Not only does joy enjoys. Joy chooses. Joy chooses. Joy chooses. It's a choice. It's a choice. I can wake up every day and be sad and sappy and, and, and condescending. Or either I can wake up with the joy of the Lord in my heart. It's a choice. I, I can go through life being, as I used to say a long time ago, of mean mugging and looking pitiful and having pity parties and complaining. Or I can wake up with a smile and, and, and just know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I keep saying that. It's a choice. Some people just choose to be sad. Even in the midst of circumstances, you know, joy is still can still be present. I can have tears roll, rolling down my face, but joy can still be present. I, I, I can be mourning uh, the loss of a loved one, but joy can still be present because it's a choice. I may be going through a difficult situation, but it does not mean my joy is gone. It's a choice. Listen, C.S. Lewis, C.S. Lewis recognized the importance of making the joy choice, of making the joy choice. Even when doubt arouses, arise, even when doubt comes about. Listen, he says, moods will change. 
whatever view your reason takes, I know that by experience, now that I am a Christian, I do not have moves in which the whole thing with Christianity looks very promising. That is why faith is such a necessary virtue. So you can teach your moves where to get off. Wow. He said, now that I'm a Christian, I do have moves in which the whole thing with Christianity looks very promising. So there are times when he's saying that there's times when Christianity, it, it doesn't look that promising. He said, but that is where faith is such, an, and such a necessary virtue. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But those that come to God must know that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. There are times that life hits, our, hits us hard. Life, life will hit us hard. And, and, and doubt will set in. Doesn't mean I don't have faith. Remember the man in the Bible that brought his son to the disciples to be healed and they couldn't heal him. I love this story because uh, it brings so much humanity to our uh, uh, walk with God. It said the, man, the disciples can heal him and Jesus came and, uh, and Jesus said this kind of miracle comes from fasting and praying. And the man said, if you be the son of God, uh, uh, do something. Jesus said, if you only believe. But the man made such a profound statement. The man said, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. See, so often we we so we so so often that we walk around like we so super strong. But that's where our faith, that man spoke faith to me. He, he spoke faith that I believe, but I believe that you can help me. In my unbelief. How often are we that real with God? How often that are we that that we choose to be honest with God? Because we we choose in joy. And we're choosing to be honest with God. God, my I am going through a dark situation in my life. I believe, but God help me even in my unbelief right now. That's that speaks volume. That speaks faith to me that. That is, it not don't mean I, it does not mean that I don't have faith. It means that I have all the faith in God to get me out of that dark moment in my life. Come on, somebody, talk to me. That's where our faith tells our moves where to get off at. I'm going through a dark moment, God, but I know you can help me. That's where my faith steps in. Say I'm in a, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in a little dark space, but God. I got faith enough to believe. My mind is wondering, but my heart is still steadfast with you. God, and I believe you can bring me out of this dark moment. See, that, that's a choice. That's a choice. And so many people choose to stay in that dark moment. And they even want to blame the devil. Uh, you know, the devil wreaking havoc. Come on, I'm not looking for an excuse. I'm looking for a way out. Woo! And I know that Jesus is my way out. So I have to even say, God, even in the midst of what I'm dealing with, I believe, but help me in my unbelief because I choose today to stay joyous in you. I choose today to continue to look to the promises. As the scriptures say, I look to the hills with coming to my help, knowing that all my help cometh from the Lord. Come on, let's just be real today. Somebody need to shout, I believe, but God help me in my unbelief. There's some situations, God, that I choose not to just lay down and have a pity party, but I choose to be real with you. I choose to rely on your joy. I choose to rely on you to bring me out of the situation and the circumstance. Wow. It's a choice. I told you I'm getting happy in here all by myself. It's a choice. It's a choice. All right. In the final analysis... To wrap this thing up, in the final analysis, joy is a regular experience that no Christian can afford to miss. Joy is a regular experience that no Christian can afford to miss. But joy requires 
certain discipline. Huh. We have to be disciplined. But it's well worth it. We have to be disciplined in our life, but it's well worth it. We we have to choose joy. Choosing joy will involve capturing moments of celebration. Choosing joy will require capturing or being involved in capturing moments of celebration. Making music in your heart. Discovering the reason you have for joy. And sometimes telling your emotions where to get off. Ah! See, when that pity party want to come, you got to say, oh, no, not today. Uh-uh. I'm not singing no sad songs today. Why? Because I choose, I choose to be joy. I choose to be joyous. But joy requires growing as a Christian. It requires growing as a Christian. And, 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 and don't get me wrong. It requires growing as a Christian, and that may be best described as working on our joy. And the joy of those around us. See, it's just not about me being joyous, but it's about setting an atmosphere that people can be joyous around me. Okay? So we set that atmosphere. That is exactly what Christ was doing in the lives of his disciples. And what Holy, the Holy Spirit has come to do in us. Lead us into all truth and righteousness. The fact is one day our final destination will be not only entering into heaven, but entering into the joy. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. So we just won't enter into heaven. We'll enter into the joy of the Lord. But I, I don't want to just wait till I get to heaven. I want to experience the joy of the Lord as I go through this life. I, I, I know, I, I, you know, we sing a song. All my good days, I away my bad days, and I won't complain. See, some people ought to quit singing that song. <laughs> they complain more than they than, than they rejoice in the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? But we we got to grow up. We got to grow up, and, and we we got to know that we, we can experience that unspeakable joy, the joy of the Lord today in this life. Not just when we get to heaven. But it, it requires discipline. It requires being kingdom minded. It requires celebrating others. It requires abiding in the Lord. It requires meditating. It requires reading. It requires singing. It requires giving. It requires surrendering. It requires serving. It requires all those things that we talked about. It requires enjoyment. It requires choosing. Choosing. If we, and I'm going to wrap this up, but uh, but if we, we ever want to hear him say, because in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. That's what the Bible says. But I well, this is what I'm going to get to. When it said, well done, good and faithful servant. If you want to hear him say, well done, you must have done well. You have to, you have to be done well. What does that mean? I just turn the words around. If you want to hear him say, well done, your life must have done well. I, I tell you, we have enough reasons in this world to be sad, to be angry, to be down. But I choose to continue to lift up my heads to God. Even when I'm going through dark moments, I choose to ask God, ask of God for deliverance, for strength, for help. I don't have to be the pseudo-Christian. I can be human in my spirituality. Be Besides, there's only one God. He is God, not me. And, and he gets pleasure out of me depending solely on him. His sovereignty, 
But sometimes we act like we got to be so strong. We got to be so strong and invincible like we don't never need him. Uh -huh. That's the reason we miss out on so much enjoyment of God. Because we don't celebrate him enough and, and, and rely on him enough. Because we have made ourselves little gods. We, so many people that have told, yes, we need to grow up in Christ. Yes, don't get me wrong. We need to be more kingdom minded. We need to be more spiritual. But we should never decrease our dependency upon God. I grow up in God, but I will always need him. I'm always dependent upon him. That's good preaching right there. That See, that's where we, we miss this thing that, that, uh, about how we want to grow people in Christ with disciples. And, you know, but we got to grow up and admit our humanity in God, our, our humanity with God. Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane showed his humanity. When he said, be thy will, let this cup pass me. But then he said, not my will, but let thy will be done. See, we, we, we got to get back to what God really wants of us and how we can enjoy the joy of the Lord is by acknowledging our dependency upon him. And celebrate, celebrate, enjoy the things that God has given us and quit crying about all the things that's wrong and begin to celebrate all the things that are right. Real quickly, let me give you a reason. He woke you up this morning. Yeah, let me give you another reason. He woke you up this morning. You still was able to use your feet, your legs, your arms, your mouth. You still were able to eat. Enjoy. The joy of the Lord is truly our strength. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word today, God. We thank you for our time together. God, 12 ways to increase our joy. God, we pray that we will celebrate you more and celebrate others. We pray that we'll learn to sing. We, we pray that we learn to meditate, read your word. We pray that we will abide in you, God. We learn to give generously out of our heart. We learn to surrender. We learn to serve God. We learn to uh, just enjoy and we will choose joy over our sadness and over our situation and circumstance. Help us, God. Help us, God. I pray today, God, that you would increase the joy of those that have heard this teaching. And I pray that you would increase the joy of my enemies. I pray that you would bless every pastor, preacher, and teacher. I pray that you would bless the body of Christ as a whole with an a outpouring of joy. God, I love you and I praise you and I honor you and I thank you for who you are in our lives. Thank you for bringing me to this point in my life. God, I owe you everything and I surrender all to you. May not always get it right, God, but I, I, I know that you are still there. You still have your hand on me and you're still keeping me and grooming me and transforming me. I pray tonight that, God, you would give us grant us sweet sleep, God. And we just love you and we honor you and we praise your name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for tuning in. Continue to pray for us. Share this. You can always go back and uh, look at it uh, from the beginning. And our podcast is on Devoted to Him. Have a good evening. Bye now. See you next week.